What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I've actually done this video probably half a dozen times. And during this one, if you see me cut and it's really obvious, it's because my allergies and I'm sneezing. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time onto that piece there. Um, I just don't want to keep starting and going back over. I have notes in front of me I've been scribbling on. And hopefully we can follow this whole thing. So to start off, another whatnot breaker being called out on social media. This is a long one. This all started yesterday. There is a lot to it. Go get yourself something to eat. Beverage of choice. It, 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 it's crazy. If you guys are part of the Facebook group, Sports Card Scammer Tracker, you're probably aware of the situation. It's blown up on all social media events, uh, avenues from IG, Twitter, um, Facebook, I TikTok, whatnot went. Wow, it just it was insane yesterday when these guys went live during the whole thing. We'll talk about that. But let, let's hit into the meat and potatoes of it all. Brody, who is the original owner or winner of this card out of a break from August 28, 2022, had Jalen Waddle, NT, 101, RPA, and a break. The breaker who was with Bleacher at the time, and like I said, we're just going to call him Bleacher because just like Backyard Breaks has like eight identities on whatnot, these guys do too. Bleacher Hits, Bleacher Breaks, Bleacher Hoops, etc., etc., etc. So Hot Hands, BK, hits it for him. Cody, or Brody, sorry. Brody gets a couple packages in, no hit. Gets with him. They say to the next package coming out. The next package comes in, not in there. Reaches back out to him. And you guys will see some of this uh, messages here in a little bit. Reaches back out to him. They tell him, take it up with whatnot. You guys know why I, I what I'm thinking. I'm not even going to get into that piece there. Just push it on whatnot. Get with whatnot. Whatnot will make it right on our behalf. Insane even thinking that. Comes to mind, I missed some breakers out there that no longer break anymore because we didn't have these issues like this back in the day. Scott Bateson from Nasty Breaks and Liberty Bell Breaks come to mind offhand. Great guys, ran a great business, made it fun. If there an issue arose, they made sure you were well, well compensated on to it all. Because they took pride in that stuff. Being accurate, getting you stuff quick. Nowadays, you don't see that much. There's a few people out there that still do it. I know people are going to be like, well, that's why I only break with so-and-so, so-and-so. I only break with a couple people, and that's because I've known who they are. Probably for eight, eight years, I'd say, at least. Maybe more now. Nine, ten almost. So, everybody's going to have their own story of why they break with somebody out there. But trust me, it can happen any time. And do you have that much trust and faith in that breaker to make it right? That's that's your call. Not even for anybody else to judge, but you, you alone, that's your money you're spending. So, let's get back into this. Whatnot basically gives the card a value of $2,000. They go back and forth, I guess. Um, Bleacher wants to only do fifteen hundred. Whatnot said two thousand. Guy ends up just after weeks, just you know, disgruntled. They send him a box of twenty twenty two selected twenty twenty two gold standard as compensation. He took it because it was getting nowhere. I would have probably blew up whatnot onto this and said, "This is what you told me. And this is what they're doing." Bad, bad PR coming out of this all the way around. I mean, shame on for whoever runs Bleacher for not even, like, taking notice to this and kind of, like, just, to me, it looks like they're brushing it off in a way. And, you know, shame to whatnot because they let a lot of this stuff slide because they just take care of it because, you know, they're making that 8%. I know it's 10.9, but 2.9 is a process to be. They're making that 8%. And when you start seeing more and more bad like this, you just 
don't even want to deal with it. That's why a lot of good people have left this hobby because of nonsense like this. And I think that's the best way I could say it's nonsense or crap like this. All right, let's keep moving on with some more of the story. You guys ready for more of the story here? All right, I know you guys are. So basically, after this blows up yesterday, on all, like I said, social media, Bleacher goes live. I believe it was Bleacher Hoops and one of the other Bleachers. People stormed them. They were laughing about how many views they were getting. I don't think it's kind of funny. I think it's kind of embarrassing that you guys even went live with it all. And if you didn't know about it originally, you see it, I'd have stopped my stream, got with whoever the owner owners are, and froze everything until you looked into it better. Instead of just banning everybody and feeding into more and more drama. There is a conclusion to this, believe it or not. It's what you want to believe into it. I can only give you guys what the facts are or what's being said. Truthfully, there might only be one or two people know the truth onto this. There's just a lot of accusations going back and forth. A ton of more people have come forward about not receiving their big hits from Bleacher. I'll show you one of those. Um, like I said, if you go through these posts, I mean, it's going to take you a while. There is a lot of people saying this is not the first time. Reddit people are even on it talking about it. That was the other way I was trying to think of before. Right. I looked down my notes here. So. All that goes on. They ban. I don't know. I think somebody said one time frame they reached their ban limit on a street. Didn't even know there was a ban limit. That's kind of insane to begin with. So basically, Bleacher does reach back out to Brody. Said they're going to buy it off the individual who won it in a break last night. I guess somehow they are either a sponsor or Bleacher owns part of this repack company from what's being said. I have no idea. That's why it's kind of like supposedly... I have no idea if that's true or not. Bleacher opened some repack product. The card was pulled out of it. It was graded. That Hot Hands BK posted it on Instagram. And everybody thinks that he graded a PSA, which we find out is false. He did not grade it. It was purchased in Clearwater, Florida through somebody else, which that person then posted on to um, Instagram. The whole thing about it, the transaction going through, if he had known the history of the card, he would have never got in the first place. Yada, yada, yada. Bleacher then reached back out to Brody, saying they will make it right. They have bought the card back, and they're going to mail it to him. Brody, in return, says he is going to update all his posts to show the outcome and once the card comes back in. So let me guys ask you this out there. Why does it take all this social media uproar to make this right? If at first they said they sent the card to him, then it, if, when you see these messages, oh, we must have sent to someone else, and then they sold to somebody, they sold to somebody, and somehow it recircled back into us. Possible. It really is. No joke. Um, I sold some cards to on whatnot to somebody, and... Next thing I know, I see Joey post a picture of it on Discord. I was like, where'd you get those cards from? He's like, oh, I bought them from so-and-so. I'm like, oh, he bought them from me. I'm like, for a minute there, I, I thought I mailed Joey the somebody else's cards. I'd ask him. You know, to me, as an owner of a business or of a pretend business, however you want to call people out there, because some people aren't licensed and credited properly, wouldn't you think you see something like that? You'd want to double check your own work to make sure that you didn't screw something up. Just saying. Uh, if I was the owner of whatnot, or the owners, or however it is out there, I would have froze everything yesterday on the Sakai's accounts until an investigation is looked into, because there's a lot of stuff coming out. A lot. I don't care if you would be my number one money-making machine on my site. 
it needs to be looked into because now we're talking about reputation of a breaker, her break group, or corporation, it breaks on whatnot, and whatnot itself. You know, reputation's everything out there. Whether it's individual or by business, your reputation is what's going to follow. And if you want to be the joke of the, you know, the social media, that's not a good thing in my opinion. Bad PR. What a lot of people don't know is what not asked for people to be mods for breaks. I know people that have offered their services to it. I even offered my services with a long, well, what I was allowed to type with the character limit on to it. Why not? You need to get some old experienced breakers on here, pay them handsomely well to mod these break groups. And I think that if you say somebody is breaking, one of these mods should be present. You should have to sign up for a break or be a breaker at a certain time. I know it's probably a lot of work to do all this until you get it cleared because otherwise we're going to run into the TikTok breaking scandal. It's just going to turn into whatnot. It's a new place that they all went to. But you sign up, these mods go in there, they watch it. You know, if they're taking product off screen, hey, maybe they shut the stream down right then and there. I'd hate to do that in the middle of a break. Or they say, hey, this is your last break. You're under suspension after this. They cut it as soon as the break's done. Count is suspended until further review. Maybe you get a strike first time because you didn't know better. Maybe you're no longer allowed on to the platform. What not need to start taking this stuff seriously? Really, really seriously. All right, guys, let's go through some of the pictures here. We hit pretty much the whole synopsis, I guess you could say, cliff note version of all of the Facebook fight theater. I don't know what else to call it today. Here's our card in question. So that's what was pulled. This is what was posted on Instagram, which, from my understanding, was taken down. I don't know why you take it down. Once it's out there, it's always out there. I mean, I kind of could see where, if I look at this, that somebody would think that the guy graded himself, you know. There's the original post that, you know, this was pulled, blah, 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 blah. This starts the whole traffic of it not being shipped to him. You know, hey, it'll be delivered tomorrow, tracking, da, 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 da. It doesn't show up, get with whatnot. Whatnot comes up with a 2,000 value. Um, they want to do 1500 as you can see here. Like I said, it's just a lot of stuff into it. I've given you like the fast version of the cliff notes onto this. And I'm going to talk a little more at the end on this stuff here. This talks about where Bleacher Hits reaches out, says they're buying the card back from the winner last night's show. And they're giving them the card. I mean... Is this damage control, or is this them, like, saying, oh, crap, we really messed up. We need to make this right. Your call. Your judgment, not mine. Bleacher Hit says that the way that the original post is worded, it seems like one of their breakers posting the card as if he got back from PSA. It wasn't the case. It was one for somebody in a repack. It was the last uh, live stream of the night. You can go back, look at it, blah, 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 blah. This is what Brody comes back says, I knew in September that y'all didn't send the card when I opened the case with whatnot, and they came to the conclusion y'all never sent it. Also, I never knew it got sent to someone else. Y'all claimed it that I that he lost it. Lots of stuff, like I said, went on with all this. After whatnot investigated, they determined y'all didn't send it. Bleacher says, we sent the card out. We just sent it to someone else on accident. It is possible. Um, there's many people out there who get sent the wrong stuff. They do the unethical thing and keep it. There's also people out there who get a lot of breaks. They just don't remember, you know, oh, I guess I hit this. Could be one of those things. I know it's happened before to somebody. Um, I've received people's cards before in the mail. And I've returned them to the breaker. And there's times where I was, what I guess you could say, one of the bigger 
people getting the breaks. And a lot of times I didn't remember hitting stuff, but I was getting so many breaks. I went back, you know, I'm like, because they would label on the package like, you know, um, NT PYT's, you know, 86. And I'd go watch that video and I'd be like, oh man, this was mine. I just didn't even know I hit this. I must have missed it because I went to bed that night. Didn't watch the breaks. Forgot about it. There's times I was like, oh man, this belongs to so-and-so. Reach out to the breaker. Hey man, I got this card off of so-and-so. You know, it belongs to them. You want me to mail it back to you or you want me to forward it to them? Up to you. If I knew the other person, I'd reach out to them as well. And back in like 2015, 16, even 17, we were such a tight uh, community that, you know, we would somehow have all three of us in a chat, you know, in a, like a group message type deal and come to a determination. Instead of me sending it way back over to California, then him resetting it way out to like, say, Ohio, I'll just send it to him and, you know, we move on with it all. We made sure right owner got the right card. Not saying that happens all the time. There's a lot of unethical people that would keep it. Knowing that it's not their card, too. Um, Let's keep going here. All right. Deal, Deal Me Slabs wants to clear the year with this. He sold the card to Bleacher last Friday to Clearwater Card Show in Florida. I know less than a few weeks. Definitely was not aware of the history. <laughs> So, this is where it all starts coming into play, with more information coming forward. This guy, oh, I should say this person out there was the owner before Bleacher. He purchased it, didn't know the history. A lot of people don't know the history. There's so many freaking cards out there that are getting lost and stolen. It's hard to keep track of. Wasn't this a part of this, you know, here and there? I got this a one-on-one, a little bit easier with the uh, logo and all that, but it's hard to keep up with it. I, I understand that. This was a negotiation um, here showing, you know, hey, can you use this 1400? Let's get it done at 13. So there's all that right there. All right, let me close this out. So that's one isolated situation where I think there's a lot of things wrong with the whole picture. One, when this happened last August and it didn't get to the owner in September, there should have been a better resolution. Don't pass the buck on whatnot. If whatnot's going to be nice and cover it, you still do your part too. You still do your part. You want to be remembered as the guy that did his part, or the person, I should say, that did their part. So if whatnot would have given like say two grand back onto their card, forwarded to them, whatever it may be. Me as a breaker, I would have still done something nice for the guy too, because hey, that's my fault, my error. Now, if whatnot did not pay out to them, they're leaving it on to the breaker to come up with it, and they said two thousand dollar value, I'd been like, hey man, the time I looked at this, I think it's worth more than two thousand. What do you think the perceived value is? Let's come to that conclusion piece first. Worked with a person, get an agreed amount piece, and then I would have went from there with it. That's the correct way of handling it. To me, it looks like a lot of this is pushed on the back burner. It does not look good overall. What not? Again, Y'all need to clean this stuff up with these breaks. Uh, every time I turn around, it's always some kind of scam or whatever on whatnot breaks. If you're going to make some new department, then do it. Find the right person to head it. Have him bring in people he can, one, work with and trust into doing your mods. Breakers TV used to have mods that would bounce around. And I'm not talking about the mods you get. They were going through there, seeing how streams are going, watching them, making sure, hey, you can't have your Budweiser freaking logo thing in there. You can't do this. You can't do They told the breakers that. Can you please get that taken care of after the break or whatever? This is not being sponsored, nothing like that. It worked out kind of decent. I mean, there was some drama or crap that went on about that, too, but. There needs to be something done on it. There needs to be a standard. There needs to be accountability. 
And when something like this arises, hey, it sucks for both ends, the breaker and the hosting site, but there should be a freeze on that until an investigation's done in a timely manner. I'm not saying a week. You know, 24, 72 hours should be enough time to gather enough information onto it all and get it done. So, a lot of other people have come out now saying they didn't get their stuff from Bleacher. I've seen the messages on Reddit. You guys read through this post here. There's 1.1 thousand comments. You look at that original post, there's probably 3,000 now on it. We're going to scroll up. Another person, well, since now I see the bleacher breaks jack someone else's one-on-one, I'll go ahead and post my experience as well. It's approaching a year now, and I've not heard a word from them after it magically went missing and have received nothing to compensate from them. Turns out my Roma was kept and put into another repack. This is an update, which was hit again by somebody else a few weeks later. I'm absolutely disgusted after hearing this information. Still waiting for a reply from the company on IG. I reached out to the breaker. It was immediately blocked after inquiring why my card was stolen for me to repackage. After speaking with about five other people who have experienced similar things, it's safe to say that a common occurrence of bleacher breaks, unfortunately. There's the Remo 101. Um. <coughs> Uh, it says here, package delivered on the 25th, few hours after you messaged me the first time. The card wasn't in there. It was a big card. I'll check the tapes, but if any future instance happens, best you reach out right away when the package arrives. You know, da, da, da. Can you send me the package? You know, I understand that. People not reaching out, taking a few days. I mean, what happens if that person went on vacation or, you know, something happened where they had to go out of state to a family member? It might be a couple days till they get that package open. You have to have an open-ended conversation on both sides of the house. Hey, how come it, you know, don't be coming off nasty like, hey, man, it was delivered on the 25th. Why am I just hearing about this now on, like, July 8th? Oh, well, I left on vacation for 4th of July, you know, from the 27th on or whatever it may be. Family outing, went on a cruise, whatever, neighbor picked up my mail, but it wasn't tampered with. Open dialogue, guys. Open dialogue ended dialogue it will save you so many headaches ask the questions don't be an ass about it but as you guys can see just more and more and more stuff There's a more of the message for this Romo. Where'd you get that Romo? The one on one you posted last year. The scammer group tracked it back to you eight days after I hit it in a break. And where'd you get it? I had one in a break on whatnot. A break, me too, on July 14th. Yes, but it was a repack. They're talking about these same exact repacks again onto it. So, coincidence? Are people headhunting? You guys be the conclusion on that, not me. I can only see what I see in front of me. I can make my own judgments and my own opinions. For one, I just don't break with other people. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. Especially with all this stuff coming out onto this stuff, it, it's it's just insane. They're they're talking about packages on eBay. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Yeah, it just starts talking more and more craziness onto this stuff. All, we'll say allegedly, supposedly onto it. Like I said, y'all draw your own conclusions onto it. I'm just here to talk about this. A remedy to try to fix this. Why things are not happening in a good way when things come up missing. Such as this. And taking social media blast all over the place for somebody to get something done and to be looked into. It shouldn't happen that way. It shouldn't. We are in a time and error where prices have dipped. Yes, dip, dip, dip like Daniel. Um, people need money. People want to gamble on breaks. If you're going to be a breaker... Better be ready to do what it needs 
to make things right across the board. I'm not going to talk about the insurance stuff that's been being talked about now for years, who's responsible for it, yada, da, 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 da. As a breaker, when I was a breaker, if a big card was hit, I would ask the person, do you want insurance on this? By email or live there in the chat to where I screenshot it. If I didn't feel comfortable then, there were times I ate the insurance charge just to make sure they got it. That was me, personally. What others do that? I don't know. I can't speak for them. But the first thing I would do was always ask, hey, do you want insurance on this? If so, send me X amount of dollars to cover it. Or I'd be like, hey, man, I'll split the insurance with you. It's going to run 20 bucks. I'll pay 10 You send me 10 If it makes them feel more comfortable. Because it made me feel better that there was insurance on it. Now I got it. Insurances are bitches to claim and all that stuff like that out there. But, you know, it's a work through process on getting stuff done like that. The sense of, I guess you could say, security or whatever you want to call it out there by having that insurance on to it as well, too. Your tracking, whatever it may be across the boards. This here, like I said, really... A long, long read, guys. I give you guys the Cliff Notes version of it. There's so much more that goes into it, piecing it all together. Like I said, one of ones hit. Guy never receives it. He reaches out. Reaches out again. Go to Whatnot. Whatnot deems a price. I don't know if Whatnot paid the individual or not, but it looks like they kind of pushed it off onto the breaker. Breaker didn't agree with it. Wanted to do a lower amount. The minimum it should have been is what Whatnot was saying. Whatnot should have stepped in and did their due diligence, which they failed to do. Card resurfaces. The way it looks at first isn't the way, I guess, it goes down. From what I'm reading back and forth on to it, there's videotape of a repack. Ownership and um, sponsorship or whatever it may be with the repack and the... Actual breaker, undetermined, like I said. Um, no idea if they sponsor, or somebody said they're part owner or something like that through all this, but it's all hearsay onto that part there. From there, social media blows up. The invasion of the whatnot stream goes on. Employees laughing, joking, pointing every which way, banning people. Shows the immaturity level being handled by this. Like I said, if I'd have been the breaker, I'd have been like, hey, we're going to cease fire in this break right now until we get this situation cleared. I'm reaching out to the boss or bosses. Or I'd have paused where we were at, talked to them while the stream's live, say, guys, we're going to break this. We're going to stop at the end of this. And then the situation's going to get rectified, and then we'll come back. Whether it's a day, tomorrow, three days from now, whatnot needs to do their pieces onto it. You got other people now saying similar situations have happened. Just not a good look at all. Not a good look at all. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think of it all. You got time to go through all the sports card scammer tracker messages. Really, really interesting reads with a lot of stuff people are saying. How much of it is true? I don't know. Because one, I'm not affected by it as being a buyer under one of their breaks, so I can't speak that I have a card lost or stolen out there from one of their breaks, and I don't have all the messages and everything that's transpired between buyer and breaker as well, too. But to me, a lot of this just does not add up right and correctly. Like I said, I want to talk about this today. We haven't touched this stuff in a long time frame. I'm very disappointed both in how this was handled originally by the breaker and by whatnot and how this whole thing's transpired. And just more and more stuff is just filtering in on this. And it's just not a good look for the card hobby community today, yesterday, whatever it may be, because we keep having more and more bad stuff along the way. And I'm sure Sports Card Radio is going to do a bigger, more in-depth follow-up video on this. Um, th this is, this is kind of pretty big on to the whole thing with it, but I wanted to give you guys the cliff note versions today, some of my opinion on what should and should have 
happen correctly without people making hastily, quick, bad decisions, in my opinion. Heather and that, guys. You guys have a good Sunday rest of the week. I'm out. Catch you next one.